Well, it's great to be here. This is a, a really a wonderful event for a wonderful cause. Thank you so much. You really were a young achiever at a very early age. You were the youngest assemblyman, right? Well, I was the youngest assemblyman ever to be in the assembly leadership. When I first ran, my motto was, I ran against an incumbent who had been there a very long time. And my motto was, time for a change. But now, 30 years later, I'm for continuity and experience. Now that you've had the experience, what about the younger guys coming up? Is there a motto, time for change? <laughs> in many places, but not in my district. Not in your district. You have a great district, I California. I, I, I'm very, I love, I love my constituents. I love the honor of representing them. And that's why I keep doing it, uh, or trying to do it. We're lucky to have you. Thank you. Now, I, um, I'm going to talk about things that inspire people because we're here for children that are making their lives better through music therapy. Uh, I read that you were inspired to become a politician by a high school teacher. Blanche Beddington, a wonderful teacher who got me excited about government, about current events, about American history, and about uh, the role of government in trying to help people deal with their problems. It changed my whole life, it changed my interest and career, and it's if I have to pick one single source of my decision to get into political activity, I would give her the credit or some people might give her the blame. This is a public school teacher who had devoted her life, who was excited by it. She had been teaching for many years. She hadn't gotten bored and she was still able to inspire. That's wonderful. And the, these kids are being inspired over at the CSUN program. and so. I found that comparable to, to your teacher and your experience. Um, you were a volunteer yourself. Um, <laughs> I could list the places, but you already know them. Um, one of the organizations, what is now today AmeriCorps, right? Vista That's volunteer. Right. I was a Vista volunteer when I finished law school. Uh, it was a wonderful activity. I worked in Baltimore and in San Francisco, uh, uh, working with uh, low-income people. Uh, uh, trying to put my legal education to the help uh, and these are people who faced many difficult problems. What do you recommend to young people today that would aspire to have a career like yourself whether whether it's in music or politics I mean what are the key key elements that need to be in place in order to achieve your dreams? Well I think first it has to be something you enjoy uh, you really have a love for and secondly Think about it in the context of not just what you can do for yourself, but in how you, how you can bring something to make life a little better for other people. And uh, the combination of the love of what you do and having a larger purpose, I think, is, uh, is very key. And that's what they do here. Uh, this clinic, uh, I mean, I've always believed music has healing powers, and uh, here they're taking kids who really need healing and, and they're providing it totally through volunteers, totally through private contributions, no government, no rules and regulations coming out of Washington, just an effort coming from people who care. Do you believe that's, that's the proper way to fund these programs or do you believe that there should be funding for the arts by the government? Oh, for the arts, absolutely. I, because I think part of a basic education is, is arts and music. Uh, I had it when I grew up. Uh, uh, to this day, there are, there are, there's music I know and love because I was first exposed to it as a child through the public schools. Why do you think that there are people in Washington that don't believe that? Well, it's a complicated question. Uh, we ha look, uh, we have serious budget problems, but I don't quite understand what should be higher on our priority list than educating our young people, because. Even if you want to take a very narrow view of that, that's about the economic future of this country. And, and art and music and culture is a fundamental part of education. And government has some obligation here to lead and help. But when you have a program that started by, on its own through just the commitment of good volunteers, that's a wonderful thing to watch as well. Now government could come in, make it spread it out, send the message of what's happening here to other communities. Uh, uh, we, we can play a useful role if we're up to the job of doing that. So it's possible, it's possible that a, a program like the CSUN Wellness Clinic could eventually become government funded or be a model for another government program? Sure it could. Uh, and look at the lessons 
I mean, it isn't just the people who are benefiting. It's the lessons you learn. This program is helping a discrete number of young people. Uh, there are people like that all over this country uh, uh, where they don't know about this. Uh, so uh, the, the appetite for this could be tremendous once people get the information. That's wonderful to hear. I, I, I mean, I want to share that with the people in this program. I'm sure they'll be excited to hear you say that. Uh, it's a great vision. Uh, what kind of, um, speaking of children, what kind of legislation are you working on right now that might have to do with children? Well, uh, I think a lot of, I think almost everything we do has to do with children. Uh, I'm very involved in foreign affairs issues. Are our children going to grow up in a world where there's peace or where there's constant conflict? Uh, are we going to grow up in a world where uh, millions and millions of people are dying children born with age. In the area I work on in intellectual property, uh, on the Judiciary Committee, are we, are we going to have the creative forces that are going to provide the next generation with new content, new movies, new books, new music, uh, or is it all going to be wiped away in a world where uh, digital piracy runs rampant and no one can ever make a living using their creative talents anymore? And I understand that's a big issue for you. It's and you've been very involved in that. Uh, I'm sure the people on the studio lot appreciate that. I, I say sometimes, in Los Angeles, as a congressman from this area, this is my automobile industry. People make their livings uh, in this industry. So at the narrowest sense, it's about jobs for my constituents, economic well-being. But in a larger sense, the one area that America, without question, still leads is exporting our creative products, our movies, our books, our music, are wanted all over the world. In police states that try to keep their people from hearing anything about America, the, the means of technology have allowed our music and our films, our stories, our narrative to come to these people. And it gives them hope. So it's not only good for my district, I think it's, it's good for America and it's good for freedom and liberty around the world. I agree. I thank agree. you. I think you're doing wonderful work. I want to thank you for coming. I won't keep you any longer. I'm fascinated by your life and your career. And thank you on behalf of all of us here in California for the work you do. Well, and thank you. This is a wonderful event. Thank you very thank much. Thank you.